a lot of people are reaching out and commenting on videos of mine asking me what my view on GBTC is, what my view on Bitcoin is overall, what has been happening. And um, I wanted to take some time to update uh, anybody who's following on how I'm processing through uh, what's been happening on Bitcoin's price action uh, over the last couple of weeks, especially, but definitely over the last few months. And I want to start out by saying just right off the bat, um, un until uh, I'm going to lay out before you today kind of my um, the way that I'm approaching the next few months, uh, how I'm going to handle my investment in GBTC as well as in Bitcoin overall, because the two are inextricably linked. And I just want to make that clear from the start that um, as, as far as it relates to GBTC, um, the trajectory and whether or not I hold and for how long I hold is tied directly to what Bitcoin is doing. Um, and I long, long, you know, a couple weeks ago, I want to say, I think it was a few weeks ago, I made a, a comment about this box and uh, that in this box, I would, uh, you know, I would get out of GBTC um, if we fell below uh, the bottom of this box, uh, which would have been a total of, we're looking at about 55% of a pullback uh, because looking at previous cycles, we've never gone back on GBTC more than that. Um, so that is, you know, that's kind of my line in the sand on GBTC. But GBTC's price action is directly um, is directly related to and correlated to um, what's happening on the underlying on Bitcoin. Um, and so I want to take a step back uh, and I want to go over a few things. And Obviously, this is our entire history of Bitcoin's price action. Um, obviously, we have the two halving cycles, and I've done numerous videos on the cycles. I'll explain what the really thick, bright uh, green lines are in just a moment. Um, but obviously, uh, the base case is that every four years, um, there is a halving event which creates a supply shock, which ignites the bull market phase of Bitcoin. And which Bitcoin eventually comes to a parabolic blow off top, which is then followed by a bear market where Bitcoin loses approximately 80 to 85 percent of its value and then has a capitulation bottom and then has a uh, accumulation phase going into the next halving, which then starts over the process. OK, and so we have these these periods of time right where we have these uh, bull market phases after the halving and they typically have lasted uh, you know anywhere between a year to you know a year and a half or so right we only have two halving cycles uh, completed halving cycles of history to go off of um, but we anticipate based on that price behavior that Bitcoin is going to do that so that's the base case okay um, and it, until it's broken, then that will continue to be the base case. Now, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to repeat exactly the same way. Uh, that's why we look back at the previous cycles to try to understand, okay, well, what could possibly happen, right? So if we go to, you know, the first cycle, the first halving cycle, you know, we had basically two blow off tops that took place. And in between, there was a really long accumulation uh, consolidation phase. We didn't have the same thing in the first cycle, the first cycle, or I'm sorry, in the second cycle. The second cycle was far more gradual. And uh, the pullbacks were smaller, but still, you know, 30 to 40 percent at times. And there were five or six of them that took place. So we've been looking at this cycle and I'll, I can just, I'll just say this. Let me get off my log scale chart. Um, I'll say this much that I did not expect us to have as little volatility to the downside on the way up. Right, so if we just forget about, for a second, forget about what we've seen over the last few weeks, uh, we only had one pullback that was of more than 30%, and it was barely that. And I, you know, just looking at the second cycle, I was really concerned that we were able to get as far as we got into, you know, here into March and April without more 30% plus pullbacks. 
See, by the time we got to kind of this area, when things started to turn, we had already had three or four pullbacks of 30% or more um, by that point of the cycle in the 2016 to 2017 run. And by this point of, you know, once we got to this point of the cycle in terms of number of days in the 2012-2013 run, uh, by that point, what happened was we had already seen one blow off top peak. We have not seen that. That's why a lot of us have been hesitant to try to say any anything about you know it being more like the 2013 you know double peak um, or saying anything about you know that we've already hit the peak. A lot of people are looking at you know up here that happened what what was that April 14th. I think was the exact date that we hit that top. People are saying, oh, that was the top. But the problem is we haven't seen a blow off top. A lot of people are talking about Wyckoff uh, distribution and you know that you know some people are saying that, but we also haven't seen a recovery, a certain recovery and then a move down in the time that a lot of people were suggesting. So I, I don't know that that's it either. Okay, so that's kind of recapping and, and it's hard to really understand what's going on now I went back and I was looking at price action over the uh, uh, over the course of you know the previous phases and one thing that I realized was that our price action is if I go to let me go to my eight hour chart here um, see because if, if we just look at what's going on right now uh, we have this sideways triangle so just to kind of explain where we are on my chart here we've kind of got this sideways triangle pattern forming and in this kind of uh, consolidation, price could, you know, a lot of people are posting charts about this, price could either take a dive or it could come up. And a lot of people are trying to really figure out what is going to happen. So I went back, as I've done multiple times throughout this cycle, I've gone back to previous cycle history. And I discovered, as I was looking, that there's only one place um, where this price action took place and let me explain what I mean by that if you look at the you know the and it was I'll just you know throw it out there it was at the um, after the peak and going into the bear market phase after the blow off top now I want to make real clear right this was after a blow off top right we have not seen a blow off top yet in our current cycle um, but I just want to show you here from the top if you go to where we've gotten about the same percentage of a pullback, it was slightly a slightly shorter amount of time in 2017 into 2018 um, compared to right now, slightly shorter in terms of time frame. But if you go to around that spot, it's about a, almost a 53% pullback, and then look at what you get. So you have you know you have this triangle. Oops, I'm sorry. You have this uh, trend line that a lot of people probably are watching, almost like we're watching a trend line right now, and then you've got kind of another steeper trend line and so on, right? But look at, you've got this triangle pattern forming right here. Well, this triangle pattern broke down, and that was basically confirmation that it was the bear market. Um, but again, I, I've said this a couple times, you have to remember this, we had a blow off top here, right? So. Um, we can't discount that. So while, while that was kind of surprising for me to see that that was the only other place where that price action took place, where we had a drawdown 50% plus and then the, a sideways triangle almost in the exact same pattern and almost in the exact same time frame, uh, that was surprising to me. But once again, I'm going to say this a whole bunch, once again, we have not seen a blow off top over here. We have seen nothing even remotely close to a blow off top. And so to me, the cycle is not broken yet. Um, and I think I, I've said this before also, uh, I think when you consider the amount of leverage in the system, I, I, I think what worried me, I told you guys, I was worried that we never saw a 40% pullback. We never saw, we didn't see as many huge pullbacks in our price action going up. Um, and I, so I was expecting 40% at some point. Well, we got in total uh, from our, you know, from the peak, we got, what was that, 53%, right? So I wasn't expecting 53%. I was expecting 40%, 
But when you think about it, the amount of leverage in the system, it makes more sense to understand when you have, especially like if you remember our wick, the huge wick, that wick itself was, you know, a 20% wick, right? So on the eight hour chart. So if you think about that, it's like, okay, yeah, like look at, that's how much leverage got cleaned out of the system. And, and so to me, there's not enough to suggest still that we are going to go into, you know, a bear market or that we're even resembling the 2013 cycle. But what I've been saying to a lot of people is one, you always have to be prepared for your downside risk. Okay, that's, you know, that's something that I've been learning um, as part of CTM. And that's something that everybody needs to learn. Be aware of your downside risk. And I would even say always have a contrarian view at the ready in the back of your mind. And the reason why is because, I mean, I'm just going to tell you flat out. One of the reasons I'm still bullish is because I want to be bullish. I want this to, I mean, like I, I bought in, you know, down in this area, uh, but just because I'm still in profit doesn't mean that I don't want this to go up. I mean, geez, look at the previous cycles. Do I want this to have been the top? No way. I wanted, you know, look, a lot of people were targeting 160,000. I was targeting either 230,000 or 260,000. That's where I want price to go. I want price to go up there, all right? So part of the reason I'm still bullish, if I'm honest with myself, is because I want it to go to my price targets. I want the cycle to still be intact. Because if that's if, if the cycle's still intact, then Bitcoin is the, still the most asymmetric trade that you could possibly take, right? And it's the chance of creating like life-changing wealth, generational wealth. So that's what I want, right? But I can't let my desire affect my view of price action, right? So price action's got to be what it's got to be, right? Now, what I decided I was going to do, because as we got, you know, as we were get, you know, I thought we were going to get a 30% down here. We didn't. It was like 15% or 16%. We finally got 30% here, right? And, but, but we, you know, and I was, I was kind of thinking we would get 30% up here. We didn't it was still below 30%. So when we didn't get 30% up here after this move, I was a little worried. And then I thought, you know, maybe up here, oh, well, I gotta erase this circle here. Um, I thought maybe up here, as we, you know, got up, I thought maybe we would shoot up, you know, make a 100% move or 50% move to the upside, and then we would get our, you know, 30 or 40% pullback. But while a lot of people were upset that Bitcoin wasn't really skyrocketing like they thought, it was just moving sideways, I was actually concerned, be, not because it wasn't going up, but because it wasn't going down. So all of this time, I was super hesitant because I was waiting for the 30 plus percent pullback or the worst case scenario to me, 40%. Well, here we finally get our 50% pullback, 53%. Okay, so my what what that did for me, because I I was waiting based on previous history. If you go back, uh, let's see, if you go back to our previous pullbacks um, in Bitcoin, let's just use this cycle um, as the example, the 2013, I'm sorry, the 2016 2017 cycle, right? During that uh, during that right, look if we start here. Look at on this first pullback of 30 plus percent, right? I, I saw that and I said, okay, price never got down below that, that massive shakeout. Okay, great. Let's go to the next, uh, oops, let's go to the next pullback right here. All right, price never got below that. Okay, uh, then we come up to this, right? So we had a big wick right here and then price continued up. And then we know what happened here was price actually did come down. Again, it wicked down, but it did not close below that wick, right? And then the other thing is that look at the support uh, that was established because it was resistance and then it was support, right? So that was something uh, pretty important, I think. All right, and then uh, we come up here um, and then we had this sell down and then we never closed below it again. 
So, and then, you know, we had this one and we never closed below it during the bull cycle. So I took that as, a, uh, as one of my cues. Let me go back and look at, I'm just kind of doing this in real time. I hope you can forgive me. Um, let's go back to the uh, 2013 bull run. Okay, look at the sell down we had here. All right, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying that, that you know, they're, they're not doing down to the wick. If you go from the top of the, the, the high, the wick high to the wick low, it's over 80%. A lot of people are saying, oh, 70%. Well, if you go from wick high to wick low, it's, 80, it's over 80. Okay, but notice what happened here. After the pain happened at this level, where, I mean, when did price get down again to there? Like if you look here, price got close, but it didn't, it didn't outsell that wick. It didn't go down past that wick. So all of that is to say, all of that time, all of that time that I'm using here to basically make the case that uh, I waited for a huge pullback because I wanted to establish a bottom. Okay, and it just so happens that that bottom for me is this line that I have here at about 30,000. That's the line in the sand for me on Bitcoin. Okay, um, and so for me, because of the magnitude of this sell down, right, because the huge sell down, and then plus because of its support over here, if you look on the left of the screen where I'm putting that yellow line, because it was the support line there, uh, my, my view here, is if we fall below, if we hit that low again, um, not I shouldn't say if we hit it, if we close below that low at any point uh, over the next you know month or two, um, then I'm going to get out, and uh, and I take that position because something will be very wrong if that's the case. If you just go off of the fact that after all of those sell downs, um, we never had a, a we never had a closing low below that. Even, even look over here, look at. Look at, I mean, we didn't have, I set this, this, uh, I set this support line at 30,000 um, from our low, uh, I mean, like it, it, it played, it, it acted as support over here for our huge uh, pullback, but it has been a support line for me ever since back here. Okay, so like even though we had wicks down below, we never closed below that line. And so that thesis, right, that thesis still holds. We might have come down to this level that we saw earlier, but we never closed below that low. And that's why that level is of the utmost importance to me. So if we, in, if we close below here, if we, not if we wick down again, if we fall down and close below that level, I will get out because I will have basically gotten profit from uh, basically from this level to this level. And some profit is better than none, in my opinion. It may not be what I wanted, but some profit will be better than none. Okay, now I understand that not everybody is in that place. I understand that not everybody's in that place on GBTC, um, but that's where I stand on that. Okay, so until we close below that support line at 30,000, um, I will still be in, I will still be a bull and I will still be looking for somewhere uh, as early as mid-September or potentially, you know, uh, it's not a popular view, but maybe even December or January. Um, but I think I'm looking for somewhere between late September and late October as the peak. Uh, I will still have that view as long as we uh, don't close below 30,000, right? Um, this other green line is uh, kind of like if we if Bitcoin were to fall to this level, um, if you look here, uh, let me go from this spot to that line. That's about seventy percent. Um, if we are if we, you know, so obviously if we fall below this line here, I'm going to get out. And then if we continue to fall and we can close below twenty thousand, basically, um, then that's where I'm going to buy again. All right. So. Um, and because I think that if, if I can get Bitcoin again, I don't think Bitcoin will ever be below this level or at this level again. But if it is, then I'm going to buy because that'll be another once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and I would just hold until 
I mean, until the next cycle. I mean, that's I, I, otherwise I don't know how you're ever gonna get Bitcoin that cheap again. Um, so that's why I have those two really thick, bright uh, green lines. Um, but as we come, as we zoom in more uh, locally uh, to where we're at right now, um, I have this other support line at about 34,500 or so. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking for it to hold that support line. Um, it's not as good a support. It, it was resistance back here, uh, was resistance, and then I mean, it's resistance support, resistance support. Uh, it's acted as a little bit of support. Um, it's not as important as the 30,000 mark, um, but it is something. Um, so we'll be looking. I, I anticipate that over the next, within the next seven to 10 days maximum, that this triangle pattern will play itself out and we'll be moving either to the upside or to the downside, right? So the best thing that you can do for yourself, right? I just outlined for you what I'm looking at. Um, you know, whatever plays out here on Bitcoin, that's going to inform what I do on GBTC. Um, you can bet your bottom dollar that if we uh, break down from this triangle pattern and we go below my 30,000 uh, line in the sand, you can bet your bottom dollar that GBTC will, will be down below uh, this 55% level here at, a, what is that, approximately $26. Um, and so I would also exit out of it at that point too. All right, so again, my advice to you would be uh, do your research, pick your levels, have conviction about your trade. Um, none of what I'm saying is financial advice for you, um, except for me saying to you that you need to do your research and pick your own levels, okay? Um, so I outlined for you what I'm gonna do. Um, I can't tell you what you should do. Um, I just am playing it uh, based on my view of Bitcoin and its cycles and the market, um, where my initial investment was and what I'm willing to walk away with and walk away from. So um, suffice to say, um, in summary, my outlook has not changed. I'm still bullish. And until we break those levels that I mentioned, I will stay bullish. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, if this was helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe and share this with somebody who you think might benefit from it. I'll see you guys next time.